Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And this morning I'm harvesting a sea of snapdragons. I don't know if you can see all that color down there. But first I wanted to tell you guys about the tulip sale that I opened up in late winter, early spring, along with Jake. I designed two collections, the Elegance Collection and the Bright and Bold Collection. And I was offering these tulip bulbs to you guys at wholesale prices. We had to close the sale early on because Jake wasn't sure how many bulbs he could secure. But I told you guys that we'd be reopening it again if he could get his hands on some more bulbs. And guess what? He did, so we're reopening the sale for just a few more days, probably about a week. The order form is in the description of this video, and guys, shipping is included. These are wholesale prices for bulbs, so I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to grow something beautiful. Anyway, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these snapdragons, and then I thought I'd show you guys my veggie garden. It's a weedy mess, guys, but things are growing, and I'm really happy with everything so far. So let me harvest these snaps, and then we'll go inside and check out the veggies. I quickly wanted to show you guys the difference between a first cutting of a snapdragon and then the side shoots that follow. So if you pinch your plant, you're basically going to get all side shoots. But if you don't pinch your snapdragons, which I didn't pinch a lot of these, um, I pinch, sometimes I do half and half because I wanna have that first flush of big, beautiful snapdragons. And I also wanna have a lot later on. So if you don't pinch your snapdragons, you are gonna see blooms earlier. So that first bloom is this one in the middle. It's nice and big and strong and full and the stem's a little thicker, a lot of there, I mean, this is actually not even a thick one. There are some that are even thicker than this, like a pencil thickness. And then the side shoots tend to be a little bit narrower, a little bit smaller with the blooms, but they are still just as beautiful and they still equally act as gorgeous inside your bouquets. Here's the difference. I'm the best. I just did a pretty lengthy harvest video where I went over all of the different varieties of these snapdragons. So I will link that above if you guys are interested. I don't wanna be um, peat, peat and repeat. I don't wanna be repetitive with everything that I say. So um, definitely check that video out if you're interested in knowing all of the varieties of snapdragons that I grow. I am gonna be doing kind of like a snapdragon in review video where I talk about my favorite varieties. Hint, this is one of them. <laughs> and their uh, amazing qualities and their just beautiful, beautiful, beautifulness in a bouquet. But honestly, I'm really not sure you can go wrong when it comes to snapdragons. I'm going to have buckets and buckets of them. So I get a lot of questions of people saying, you don't use netting, why don't you use netting? Well, basically because it's a lot more work and effort and I don't get a large number of stems that flop over. I just don't. I would say the percentage is less than 1%. Like this one plant right here is leaning on its side. So this one is a little bit crooked, but honestly, out of my entire row, I don't, they just tend to grow straight. Uh, we, we are windy here. We do have uh, wind speeds, you know, pretty decent. So I don't know what it is about the snaps. They just don't. Honestly, I don't have anything netted. Does that make me a bad farmer? Maybe. <laughs> but I don't know anything. Do as I say, not as I do. Personally, these snapdragons are a little bit more open than I usually harvest at, uh, but when Mother Nature decides she's gonna throw you 90 degree days followed by a day with about an inch and a half of rain, you harvest when you can. Oh, they are simply gorgeous and they really do smell like bubble gum. Oh, they're so good. So I think because I have, I mean, this is just one of probably three buckets that I'm gonna be harvesting. I think I might have a Snapdragon bouquet special at the market this week because I have such a large number of Snapdragons in comparison to my other flowers. So the mixed bouquets this week, I'm not gonna have a ton of them because all I, all I have right now, I think I'm harvesting straw flowers, Ageratum, Snapdragons. I do have some Amaranth. I do have a few zinnias, but not very many. And then my gonfrina is just starting. So the stems are not tall enough yet, but I also still have some feverfew and a couple of other things, but rubecchia, phlox. So I do have some stuff, but I probably will offer some straight snapdragon bunches and see how that goes over at market. Now I will keep these in my cooler for two days.
and now let's adventure to the vegetable patch. So you guys remember I did a video probably five, six weeks ago where I set up my birdies beds and I put this trellis up and I planted some stuff in here. Well, some stuff is doing really great. Other stuff, not so much. Like for instance, the sweet potatoes, a lot of them died. We had some unseasonably cool temperatures in the month of June. In fact, we had several nights in the 30s. It killed a lot of my stuff. It topped off all of my basil. All of my basil was not doing well, and including the sweet potatoes, not doing well. So I definitely had some issues with sweet potatoes. I do still have some that are alive, but they're not thriving. They're definitely not thriving in this area. But the radishes that I planted in between them are I have lovely radishes and the strawberry bed. That's going really well. Um, I did lose, I think, two plants died. They didn't make it, but that, that happens. So anyway, the, the rose, the climbing rose, that's starting to put on. The, oh, I, I put scarlet runner beans in this bed as well. And obviously, guys, I did this just for the dramatic visual effect. It's just so visually striking to look at. I love them so much. So I'll definitely be doing that again. And then on this side, I have my peas. So my sugar snap peas. Yes, it's late. Yes, it's July and I have sugar snap peas, but that's okay. I'm in a very cool, seasonable climate. I can do that. I also have the clematis on here. That's vining up, um, you know, so good stuff. I do have some runners that are developing on the strawberries. You can either cut those off or you can allow them to um, go ahead and root in your soil. Now I'm on the other side of the garden because I honestly, I can't see the sun's facing right into the camera so I couldn't see anything. So obviously I've got the weeds coming up in the aisles in the form of uh, pigweed. It's just a nasty weed here. It comes up really easily. So me and the kids, you know, every once a week usually try to get out here. We missed this past weekend. so. It comes, it comes up real easily and uh, it's just really takes over an area. So right here in the front, I've got two kale and then I have Brussels sprouts and then all the way down, I've got beautiful cabbage and some cauliflower. So you're gonna see the shadow of my camera in some of these shots just because of the way that I um, have to have the camera. I actually, oh, there's a cabbage worm right here. I knew it, I knew it because I could see, do you guys see that right there? Of course, the camera stopped recording and I didn't even know it. So I'm just going to quickly look. Um, I was get oh, there's poop over in this one. Oh, the cabbage poop, the cabbage worm poop. Um, I didn't even realize my camera stopped recording at that very moment as I discovered the cabbage worm. Isn't that how it goes? It's finally something interesting and boom, camera's like, no more recording capacity. Oh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I don't know. Um, I don't see one on here. Obviously, I haven't lifted up all the leaves yet, but these little turds. Anyway, what I do is I collect them and I feed them to my chickens and I find my chickens to be very happy. There's a baby. You really have to look because they're tiny. I'm not going to feed that one to my chicken. That's insignificant. It will not bring them much nutritional value. All right, looks like I'll be looking for worms in the back of my brassicas today. This is uh, Brussels sprouts. These are my gorgeous purple cabbages. I love them so much. They're starting to form little tiny heads in there. And then pan over to the left, I've got a few regular cabbages as well. I'm gonna have to definitely get out here and check. This is a gladiola. <laughs> I also have some lovely um, cauliflower. I should probably come out here and, and you know, um, cover the heads. You know how you can go like this and then take a string and, or a rubber band and just cover them up. I just haven't done that. Um, they, they're quite small right now, but I don't know, they're looking really great. This is actually the best cauliflower that I've ever grown. And this brings me to the rest of the garden. It's really hard to see with the sun, but guess what these are? Those are sunflowers. To the left of the sunflowers, this right here is, a, I don't know, like a 90, 90 foot row of tomatoes. And they're looking amazing. These sunflowers are gonna be ready soon. Sunflower sieves is down here too. They're not gonna be the first ones ready, but they will be ready. I have some cherry tomatoes that are getting, uh, they're ripening up. Oh, you guys are so good. So this is a row of peppers. This entire thing is peppers. Yes, 
it's peppers. So I have bell peppers, jalapenos, long hots. I have not jalapenos. I have a bunch of different kind of varieties of peppers. The only ones that I'm actually like seeing peppers on so far are the bell peppers. And these ones I started from seed, they're called King of the North peppers. Got some really good, like I need to harvest this, I think, because I've got a little bit of a weak spot forming at the bottom of the pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, probably eat this for breakfast. This is a really nice looking pepper, I love it. And there are a lot more coming. I mean, there's one, two, three, oh, there's like four on this one that look really good. Obviously this one's like dangling right here. That looks really good, but this is actually the best bell pepper crock. crock. <laughs> it's the best crock I've ever grown. <laughs> it's the best crop I've ever had of bells. Now I have so many tomatoes and it's really hard to kind of see where everything is at, but I did have some video that I shot the other night at sunset because it was just so beautiful out here. So I'll be showing you guys some of that along with some of today's video of my veggie garden. And as I'm standing here right now, I'm noticing that my first sunflowers are ready to cut. They're actually a little bit more open than I'd like, but like I said, yesterday was a torrential downpour. We got so much rain. So I haven't been out here in, in two days, honestly. Wow, these are really gorgeous. These are actually called Proca Gold and they have that light center instead of the traditional sunflower center. I'm gonna be cutting these and going ahead and putting them in my cooler and I'm gonna hold these guys for market day. I think people are gonna be really excited to see sunflowers. The reason that I grow Proca is because Proca is a pollenless, basically a sterile sunflower, so it doesn't drop pollen on your customer's table or um, say a wedding. If you have them on your centerpiece in the wedding, you're not gonna get a dirty tablecloth underneath it because of dropping pollen. But also I wanted to mention that the sunflowers this year, and this is kind of not just me, they're shorter. They're about two feet shorter than normal. And um, this is according to myself, Obviously, I'm seeing it visually, but there's also a farm about half an hour from me that grows probably 30, 40,000 sunflowers a year. They have a sunflower maze, etc. And they're reporting that their sunflowers are a couple feet shorter than normal, which is a lot. That's a lot. For me, it's okay because I'm cutting these with, you know, like 20 inch stems. It's not a big deal. But for him, he grows it for a maze and for people to stand and take pictures with. So for his sunflowers to be short, that's a game changer and really bad for business but in my case it's gonna be okay I'm gonna cut them this size um, this is how I get them to be perfect bouquet size I plant them about four inches apart underneath and that's how I get them to be this size I don't want them to be big because then they don't look good in bouquets another tomato that I'm growing literally by the bucket full is San Marzano they make the best sauce I make them a sauce from scratch I make it the best sauce oh my goodness <laughs> so this branch fell down and that's why I didn't see it but I have um, some ripe cherry tomatoes <gasps> these are super sweet 100s and um, mm, mm, mm. I've been waiting for that for so long <laughs> should I share with my kids I'll share funny how something so small can make me so happy Hey, just from this side, I just wanted to show you. It, it, honestly, like I'm not doing a great job of keeping up on the weeds in between. I have mowed it a couple of times, and I do need to come through here with a lawnmower and just mow it down. But this entire row is basil. This is um, Mrs. Burns citrus lemon basil, and then it transitions into cinnamon basil. And guys, my basil is super far behind. I'm usually cutting it for bouquets by this point, but because we had a 37 degree morning on June 14th, it literally took the top off of all my basil and it had to start basically growing from the ground up all over again. I mean, it was super pathetic looking when I put it into the ground. This is the cinnamon basil and I can tell the difference visually because it has purple veining and the actual stem is also darker. And obviously the purple cinnamon basil smells a little bit more on the cinnamon side. I wouldn't call it a pure cinnamon scent, but it definitely does have like that earthy, clovey, dark cinnamon tones. Whereas the citrus lemon basil definitely smells just like basil, just like basil, of course, just like lemons. I have a row of a lot of eggplant. This was also damaged by weather. Um, so it's actually leaning over and starting to grow up that way. Um, a lot of them are just falling over and don't get me started on this um, black fabric. I don't wanna talk about it. It is not Bio 360 and that's all I'm gonna say. 
And now we're at my favorite part of the garden. This is my zucchini lane. I've got yellow squash on this side. I've got zucchinis on this side. And then growing up these three trellises, I have a combination of cantaloupes, things like uh, kajari melons, tigger melons, cucumbers. Uh, what else? Some more melons. This has aphids. I've got to handle it, but guess what guys? The ladybugs are handling it for me. There are ladybugs on here right now. They're handling it. They're doing the job. Over here, I definitely have more cucumbers. I haven't even, but like I said, haven't been out here in a couple days, so I don't think I have anything ready to harvest, but things are definitely looking awesome, especially after that rain last night. Like I said, I have aphids on this. Definitely have aphids. I have seen them in action, but guess what's also in action? ladybugs so i'm gonna go ahead and let them do their thing there was actually a second one on here just a second ago not sure where it went but you can see the aphids underneath the leaves they're clustered on here and they're really gross so i hope you're hungry guy i hope you're hungry get to work i don't know how much longer i can hold this tomato without eating it you can really see the aphids underneath that those are all aphids i'm just squishing them and squishing them and I've done this probably four or five times over the last oh I don't know a week or so since I noticed that they had aphids here I have not done anything to spray these um, I probably I would recommend maybe a Captain Jack's dead bug but also ooh, they're just squishing them is like my method I squish them I don't really use anything in the garden um, as far as pesticides go I try not to anyway, but dang, these aphids, and they're, uh, they're only on this plant. They have not spread to other plants yet, so uh, that's just lucky. So we put three trellises up, and this is like the fourth year I think I've used a trellis like this. I've used trellises for years, but obviously this method really became popular after Jess from Roots and Refuge showed everyone how to do it. Um, honestly, they're so perfect for trellising. I have gorgeous zucchini, and this actually cross-pollinated with a safari zucchini, which is a green striped one. I love how it kind of makes a yellow striped zook. Squash, yellow striped squash, golden zucchini. Here's that safari zucchini. Uh, it really does create the most beautiful squash. Very pleasant to look at. Also, I think this would be popular at market because it looks just a little bit different than your traditional zucchini. A baby cucumber! All of my cucumbers are babies right now. Um, and I have dozens. Oh! Oh, that one's getting longer. This is a Monica cucumber. That's exciting. Yay! So I am in upstate New York, zone 4B. My last frost date is basically, let's just say June 1st this year. Although we did have some pretty cold weather the middle of June, which is not normal for us. I do have a larger cucumber down there. Um, so that's exciting. So this is Monica here on the left, and this one is Early Fortune on the right. All started from seed. I'm a little bit obsessed with all things cucumber. I, um, I love to make pickles. I love to eat them fresh. I love cucumber salad is one of my favorite things. I just love to eat a fresh cucumber right out of the garden. In fact, I would say cucumber is my favorite vegetable. Indeed. As we get further down the line here, I have a, what I call lemon squash, which is basically just a yellow squash that's in the shape of a lemon. Um, they're super productive. I always love to have a couple of these plants in the ground every year. There's a weedy mess from this side, and I don't care if it's a weed. Like, honestly, things are growing. Things look good. I have come through here, and I have weeded a couple times, and I'm just not keeping up with it. And the reason that I can't keep up with it over here <laughs> is because these are vining plants. I have some butternut squashes and this entire row, this last row by the fence, that is all Hubbard squash. I grew about 18 of them for my seedling sale and they weren't big sellers at my seedling sale. So I had, I would say there's probably 16 of them down here and they're a vining, like a pumpkin type thing. And so, so is this, this is, uh, I believe this is called Prescott melons. So they're all vining. So I can't come in here and, and use the lawnmower to weed. I would have to hand pull just so I'm careful because they're vining all over the place and into each other. So this is kind of a dangerous place to be. But I would like to get over here and pull some of the pigweed. I'm guessing my kids are gonna be so excited because this is probably the job that I'm gonna put them on today. Oh, but it's gotta be so careful so you don't pull the vining. Oh, there's little baby cantaloupes on here. <gasps> oh, I'll have to zoom in on one. They're little baby cantaloupes. Yay. 
And as we get back further towards the end, I have a bunch of watermelons. I have like blacktail watermelon. Uh, I think I have a few other varieties. Let me see if there are tags. I tried to put the tags. That's blacktail. I'm guessing these are all blacktail if I only put one tag in. Oh, and I gotta be careful not to step on these as well. I do have a couple of other watermelon varieties, but they're on the other side over here. Here it is, Congo. So I have Congo watermelon as well. Let me get down here and check for, oh, there's a little baby. Oh, and the reason that I like the blacktail watermelon is because it's only, oh, there was a, there was a cucumber beetle. It's only, uh, I think a 68 day crop. So um, watermelons in 68 days, yes, please. And in the far back corner, we have pumpkins. I believe I have Igor. I think I do have, a, yeah, there's a couple baby pumpkins. Oh, no, that one's not good. This one um, obviously didn't pollinate and has um, blossom end rot, but there are a couple of other ones that are looking good. So that one's uh, no good. I think I've got, oh, it's right here. So yeah, there's this one down here. A lot of times the first couple squash or pumpkins or whatever you have, I find a lot of times the first couple um, don't end up making it. They end up getting blossom end rot or just not getting pollinated and fall off because maybe you don't have any male flowers yet. But um, I don't know why that is. There are some things you can do for blossom end rot. My sister has some pretty bad on her tomatoes right now. But you, know, you never know what's going on and uh, hopefully it'll fix itself. I'm gonna grab some of these zucchinis because they are ready. And that's about it guys. On the other side of the garden, I do have some uh, potatoes and some green beans growing. Um, I'm not gonna even bring you over there. The rabbits, something ate the tops off my green beans. And it's not a deer because the deer are not getting in here. Otherwise I think the sunflowers would have been. Um, but something got in, but a bunny rabbit or something and took off the top of my green beans, which is a bummer. So I do have time though, if I planted them right now, I could get another bean harvest. I might end up doing that. So um, this is basically my vegetable garden and I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm excited. There are about 150 tomato plants. So I'll definitely be bringing you guys along when I do a tomato harvest. And hopefully that's sooner rather than later because I can't wait to get my hands on those juicy beef steaks. So, all right guys, I'm gonna go harvest those sunflowers. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Those juicy beef steaks. Perfect. Look at the baby hubbards, aren't they so cute? I say they're babies, but they're already, oh, kicking the things. They're already a good size, but yeah, they're, they're little. They're little baby hubbards. Just call me Mother Hubbard. here are you coming up the driveway or are you going in the mailbox coming up the driveway I must have a large package coming hey, is my microphone on you can't see me I don't have anything that did am I a bad person should I be going to farmer jail nope I love you look how gorgeous they are are they sun-kissed getting to know you Getting to know all about you. You're so perfect, I love you. I love you so much. Berries crazy cherry. I've been waiting so long. Oh my gosh. That's like candy. It's gonna be a little bit awkward, but bear with me. This is one cluster of, oh my gosh. I mean, I wanna count them. There's even another like strand. Can I, am I showing this right? Look at that. Look at that, oh my gosh. I already ate one, guys. And this one I'm probably gonna eat tomorrow. This one, I'm just, I'm like drooling a little bit just thinking about it. Yep. I'm gonna, uh oh, I accidentally took it. Should I eat it now? It's not fully ripe. I think it's ripe enough. It's standing on tomatoes everywhere. <laughs> it's still delicious. Ugh. No, it's not good. 